Okay, so thus far, did you see the explicit biblical proof that the Father has been seen, can be seen? The Holy Spirit has been seen, can be seen? Right? I don't need to comment about the Son. We know the Son has been seen. All right. Is that clear? Guess what, folks? Now is where I deal with those passages which say that God can't be seen. You see, if we were patient, I was working my way to this part. You see it? I was working my way to this segment. What about those passages that say God cannot be seen? See, I was working my way. You see? But I can't answer two questions at the same time. Now, in Jesus Christ's almighty name, by the power of the blood of Jesus, washing us, covering us, Holy Spirit, filling us, may he destroy the attacks of Satan. Okay? See, now, when Rambo tries to rush me, he says, come on, Sam. You're gonna, I'm going to teach you patience. You're going to wait, brother. You're going to wait. Right? Yeah. All right. Okay. John 118. John 118. Let's see. John 118. Sorry. Sorry, brothers and sisters. We only have 81. The other day it was over 100. Man, I'm losing popularity. Man, I got to stop teaching. John 118. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Okay. No man hath seen God at any time. But hold on. I just showed you Daniel and John. The same John who wrote Revelation, who wrote John 1.18, he saw God the Father visibly. So what does it mean no one has seen God at any time? The answer is found at the end of the verse, folks. The Son hath declared him. Guess what the Greek word for declared is? You don't need to take my word for it. You can go to BibleHub.com or interlinearbible.com, I believe. It's, it's part of Bible Hub. The Greek word for declared is the word exegesis. The son has exegeted God. The son has exegeted God. Right? Here he goes. He just put it. Exegisatu. Sorry for my butchering of the Greek. Exegesis. No man has seen God at any time. So you got to keep pronouncing the Greek over and over again until it becomes smooth on your tongue. What does it mean no man has seen God? Does it mean no one has seen God visibly? Or does it mean no man has perceived God? Seen God with the mind's eyes. You don't need to take my word for it. Go back to interlinearbible.org.com, I believe, .org. The word for seen can also mean to perceive. To see with the mind's eye. To perceive. It's like, I see your point. I see what you're getting at. So John 1.18 is not saying no man has seen God visibly. It means no man has perceived, understood God, seen God with the mind's eye, understood what God is like apart from the revelation of the Son. That's why it goes on to say the Son has exegeted him. Do you understand? So when John 1.18 says, no one's seen God, let me paraphrase and capture the point. No one has perceived and understood God as he is, apart from the Son, revealing God and making him known and explaining him to us. That's what it means. Now let me give you a parallel passage to prove that from the same writer. 1 John 5.20. 1 John 5.20. Okay? It's not saying no one has seen God with the eye. No one has perceived, seen God with the mind's eye, understood what God is like apart from the Son's revelation. 1 John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. There you go. Exegy. Understanding. John 1.18, the Son exegetes him. 1 John 5.20, the Son of God came to give us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Did you catch it? What it means, no man has seen God. No one has perceived, understood what God is like 
apart from the Son, Son exegeting him, explaining him, giving us an understanding of who he is. That's what it's saying. Yes, Loris, you got it, Loris. Loris saw where I'm going with this. Moses, Abraham, all the prophets could only understand and know God truly and intimately because the son was making God known even to them. You got it. That's why John 1.18 is saying, no one has seen God at any time. At no point in salvation history has anyone been able to know God as he is, understand him, and enter into an intimate relationship with him apart from the son making that possible? Oh, but wait, what about John 6, 46? No, Paul, Stephen, be patient, brother. So you're not patient. I think you want to do what Jesus Christ did and impress me that you keep throwing Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 at me. And the parallel is in Luke 10, 22. Okay, now... John 6, 46, what about this passage that Rambo threw at me? Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Now again, that Greek word also means see with the eyes or see with the mind's eye. Perceive with the mind. Is Jesus saying no one has seen God the Father visibly or no one has understood and perceived who or what the Father is like apart from me because only I know him. As he is, and therefore I'm the only one qualified to make him known. What is Jesus saying? You don't need to guess. Let's read John 6, 44, 46 for the answer. Come on, we're losing people, man. 78, I rebuke that. We want 200 in Jesus' name. John 6, 44 to 46. Let's see what the answer is. No man hath come unto, no man can come unto me, Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue by the power of the Spirit for the glory of your name. Accept the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now watch this. Verse 45 tells you what it means to see the Father. It is written in the prophets, they shall be all taught of God. Notice, teaching. God will teach you. So notice it has to do with knowledge, understanding. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. So why does the Father bring you to, to the Son? So you can learn about God? So you can be taught about God, 46 tells you. Not that any man hath seen the Father. See, that's it. No one has understood what the Father is like. No one has seen the Father with the mind's eye, comprehended him, except me. I comprehend him. I know him inside and out. I know him perfectly. Therefore, that's why the Father brings you to me, so I can make him known to you. Right? And he does it. As Misty was saying, in union with the Holy Spirit. In union with the Holy Spirit. Now, Mark, that passage is different. They're talking about the incarnation of God. They wanted to see the Messiah, who's God in the flesh, come in their lifetime. That's a different point. It's okay, Mark. That's a different point. Now, let me prove to you that when Jesus says... No one has seen the Father except himself. He's not excluding the Spirit. No one here means no man. He's not saying the Spirit because Jesus continues to reveal the Father, make the Father known by his Holy Spirit that he's given us in union with the Holy Spirit. Let me prove it to you. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. Okay. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, you see, and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So I, in union, in perfect accord with the Spirit, will continue to reveal things to you and remind you of the things I've taught you once the Spirit comes and takes over when I physically leave. John 16, 12 to 13. John 16, 12 to 13. I have yet many things to say unto you. I want to tell you a lot more, but ye cannot bear them now. You're not able to take it in and handle them, right? Now notice 20, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. 
for he shall not speak of himself. He won't speak on his own initiative. But whatsoever he shall hear, hear from whom? That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You're not ready for all the revelation I want to give you. So when I physically leave, I'm going to send the Spirit. He will empower you, enable you to then receive the things that you're not ready for right now. And he won't speak on his own initiative. He will only share with you what he hears. Hears from who? Hear from who? See? He'll only speak what he hears. From who? That's John 15, 26. From the Father and the Son. So the Father and the Son send the Spirit to abide with believers, to reveal to the believers what the Father and the Son wants the Spirit to make known to us. Not just the Father. Who sends the Spirit? The Son from the Father. Why would you ignore the Son? The Spirit will hear from the Father and the Son and reveal what the Father and the Son want us to know. Everyone with me or no? Right? I just quoted the verse. So, what does it mean no one has seen God? No one has seen God. Does it mean no one has seen God with the visible eye? No one has seen the Father. No one has seen the Father with the visible eye? Or no one has perceived, understood what God is like, what the Father is like apart from the Son in union with the Spirit, revealing Him. Seeing with the mind's eye. And that's what the Greek can mean. Don't take my word for it. Go look at the Greek lexicon. It's as one of the definitions is to see with the mind's eye, to perceive. Okay? Now, let me give you an example of a passage that's misquoted to show that the Father cannot be seen. John 5, 37. John 5, 37. Okay? And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither, he's talking to his, his audience, ye have neither... Heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Notice this implies, just like the father has a voice, he has a shape. Did you catch it? You haven't heard his voice, nor seen his shape. If the father has a shape, that means the father is visible, right? Just like he has a voice, he has a shape. And Jesus says, you whom I'm speaking to have never heard his voice or seen his shape. Now, is Jesus saying no one at any time, no one has ever heard his voice or seen his shape? Or is he saying you who reject me, deny me, who don't know who I am, by rejecting me, you have shown that you haven't heard his voice or seen his shape? Is Jesus saying no one has ever heard the voice of the Father? And therefore, no one has ever seen the shape of the Father. Let me prove to you that can't be the meaning. John 12, 28 to 30. John 12, 28 to 30. Let me prove to you that can't mean no one at any time has ever heard the Father's voice or seen a shape. John 12, 28 to 30. Watch this. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, they heard the voice of the Father, said that it thundered. It sounded like thunder. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Wait, they heard the Father's voice audibly from heaven. Some, To some, it sounded like thunder. To others, they thought that was an angel speaking. Matthew 17, 5. Matthew 17, 5. Okay. Yep. While he yet spake, and behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 
hear ye him. So Peter, James, and John heard the audible voice of the Father who was in the cloud that overshadowed them. So it cannot mean that no one has ever heard the voice of the Father or seen a shape. I just gave you two examples where people are hearing the voice of the Father audibly. 2 Peter 1, 16 to 18. Actually, they did faint. If you continue reading, that's actually what happened to them. They swooned. 2 Peter 1, 16 to 18. 2 Peter 1, 16 to 18. Am I boring you guys with all this stuff? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now notice what Peter says. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Who in the world told you we worship Jesus mostly and not the Father since he has a shape? I don't know. If that's you, that's your problem. You need to repent. That's not me. Everyone got it? So has the Father been seen and has his voice been heard audibly? Yes. Has the Holy Spirit been seen? And has his voice been heard audibly? Yes. So what does it mean no one can see God? No one has seen the Father? Well, I just explained. I explained what it means. Is it clear? Did everyone get it? Okay, now, what about Exodus 33, 20? Let's read Exodus 33, 18 to 20. Because that's another passage quoted to show that no one can see God. Exodus 33, 18 and 20. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses speaking to God. Right? Exodus 33, 18 and 20. Empire, what in the world does one have to do with the other? Why should the Father become flesh or the Holy Spirit come, become flesh? Because they take on a visible shape. Your question has no relevance to the Father having a visible shape and the Spirit having a visible shape. To assume a shape doesn't mean he took on an actual shape and made it part of his person, adding a second nature. Having a shape means that he appears visibly in a form of some kind. All right. Now, coming back to the issue. Block that Khmika's number. Block it. All right. Sorry about that. Coming back to the issue. See, saying attacking me left and right. If you just see what I just got. Attacks left and right. All right. Sorry about that, folks. I'm being attacked all night tonight. Exodus 33, 18 and 20. Let's read it again. Wow. All right. Okay, Exodus 33, 3, 18 and 20. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim in the name of Jehovah before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. No man shall see me and live. Okay, this is a passage used to show that the Father or God cannot be seen, right? Right? Moses says, show me your glory. Show me your glory. 
And Jehovah says, you can't see my face. But you know what's interesting? People stop at 20 and don't read all the way to 23. Don't read all the way to 23. Okay? Let's read 21 to 23. Adir Zimupod and Bia. And Lamachanam Cheta, watch. Watch what I'm doing. Okay. Because he probably thought it was me. Okay, anyway. And Jehovah said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Why don't they quote all the way to 23? Why don't they quote all the way to 23? So God's face can't be seen, but his back parts can be. You see the problem? What happens when you stop at one verse and you don't continue reading the rest of the chapter? So the most this proves is you can see God's back parts, but you can't see his face. So where does it say God can't be seen? Where does it say God can't be seen? I had called him in telefono. I didn't know he's going to say what he said. But anyway, I'm going to rebuke him and block him. Save those messages because I'm going to Zimopotnbia for what he did to Saraya. I'll call her in a minute. Okay. You got it there? So the most you've proven from this passage is that you can see the back parts of God, but not his face. Now, obviously, if God is spirit and he doesn't have a material physical form by nature but he can assume a visible form god doesn't literally have back parts and he doesn't literally have a face now gifty grace is not getting it she's not following me <clears throat> god is spirit by nature meaning he's invisible incorporeal immaterial right okay see Satan's attacking me michelle i'm the midst of teaching there's a live stream Adi, I'm talking to you in the live stream. Is here and you're on uh, live stream. Let me finish, please. Block him. Okay, anyway. Sorry. No, I won't be. I'll be attacked all day. Sorry about that, folks. I apologize. I don't want to delete this because we covered a lot of ground. Face means to see God clearly, right? Like here, you're seeing my face. You're seeing me clearly. But if I were to turn the corner, you saw my back. You don't see me as clearly, but you can still tell it's me, right? Right? If I were to walk around, you see my back. You still know it's me, but you're not seeing me clearly, right? So what is Moses asking? Moses is asking, I want to see a more fuller manifestation of your glory. Basically, what Moses is saying, I want to see you as the angels see you in heaven. Because in God... In heaven, God appears in a visible form where the angels behold the glorious form of God, and they know that's God. And he's saying, that's what I want to see, right? I want to see a more fuller revelation manifestation of you visibly. And Jehovah says, that will be too much for you to handle. I'll let you see my glory in a more profound manner, but... <clears throat> You won't be able to handle the fullness of my glory visibly manifested the way the angels see it in, in heaven. Basically, that's what God is saying, right? All right, anyway, you with me there? So even that passage does not say that God cannot be seen. Even that passage does not say God cannot be seen. Okay. I love you. Okay. Is it clear? Sorry for the distractions. In a minute, this is all going to end. Is it clear? Is it clear that even that passage says God can be seen? It doesn't say he cannot be seen. His face can't be seen. 
His back, back parts can be. What does that mean? In heaven, you see the Father in the fullness of his glory blazing visibly. So basically, Moses wants to see a more fuller manifestation of the glory that even the inhabitants of heaven are given the grace to behold. And God says, that'll be too much for you to behold. I'll let you see a little more of me visibly, but not the way I manifested to the inhabitants of heaven. That'll be too much for you to handle, Moses. Right? I hope I didn't confuse you guys. Did I confuse you guys? Or did it make sense? Amen, Mark. Beautiful passage. Did it now come out clearly? Father can be seen. Son can be seen. Holy Spirit can be seen. Have been seen and will be seen. Right? And that there is no text of the Bible that says the Father cannot be seen. God cannot be seen. None of those texts teach that. Even Exodus 33, 20 says you can't see his face, but you can see his back part. So even if I take it literally... God literally has a face. Well, his face I won't see, but I'll see his back parts. Is that clear? 